Hey guys, welcome back to Garage Time. My name's Tom, and this week we are going to go back to the fuel tank. I've been waiting for these parts to come back from the zinc plater. This is the fuel pump bracket. This is the baffle box, goes in the bottom of the tank, provides fuel to the fuel pump. And I'm going to be installing these today and hopefully wrapping up the uh, entire fuel tank modification. Check it out. Garage Time. Hey, these parts were professionally zinc plated with a whole bunch of parts that I typically do for work and uh, they don't come back yellow. I have some chemicals that should turn this, uh, put yellow chromate on them. So I'm going to mix that now and see if it works. Okay, this orange chemical here is uh, sodium dichromite dihydrate and this is from eBay, not too expensive. It goes in uh, distilled water. Um, I use reverse osmosis water from my house and it's about 1.6 gallons here to one pound of sodium dichromate. So you just dump this in. Okay, the next thing to add is sulfuric acid, which is just battery acid. So this is replacement battery acid. Um, it's two ounces. I've pre-measured it with, with water in this cup so I know how much two ounces is. I'm just gonna add that. Now this battery acid might be slightly diluted from pure sulfuric acid, so it might need a little more than two ounces. I got this recipe from a guy on Pelican Parts. Boom, that's two ounces. This kind of reminds me of Tang, like when I was a kid. Okay, I've added two more buckets here to the mix. This is the sodium dichromate solution I mixed first. This is hydrochloric acid or muriatic acid. I already had some of this. Um, it was 50-50. I added a lot of water to it, so it's supposed to be pretty diluted. Um, I think they, they want 5%, but I have no idea what this is. And then this is just clean um, distilled water, or in my case, reverse osmosis water. So what you're supposed to do is uh, drop it in here to prep it for plating. As soon as bubbles develop, which is right now, you take it out, put it directly in the chromate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm doing seven seconds. Out of the chromate, into the distilled water. And then hang it to dry. And you can see it's a little bit yellow, but it's supposed to darken um, as it dries overnight. So I'm going to make sure it's like that, yep. And then I'm just gonna hang it somewhere. I'm gonna do the same thing. These, these are just bolts from the hardware store, which are also zinc plated. So I'm just practicing on these. As long as the process works, I will put in my actual parts. Should be good. That was from more like eight, a little bit darker. Then into here. Rinse, rinse, rinse. You can see that color on that. The sodium dichromate or the chromate conversion coating does add a little more corrosion protection, which is why I'm doing it for the fuel tank. So I'm gonna have to get a bigger tray for this piece because it's, uh, it's not gonna go all the way in the bucket. I think I have enough solution. I just have to get a tray and then I'll get bigger containers for these two. Okay, now I have a little more space to work. Yes.
way better than it used to be. Remember I have this oval here where the fuel pump inserts from the top. And so I just have to line up this uh, fuel pump pickup with this oval. I'm using this square off that flange on the inside and just marking about where I think the fuel pump should go in. Right. I really don't need this big of a drain hole in the bottom and there's no threads left on this because I cut it out with the old system. And I have this weld in bung that I, I thought was gonna fit in the hole but this hole's still too big. Plus I got these, these uh, six holes on the ends. So easiest thing to do here in terms of welding is to uh, just cut out a bigger hole, weld in a plug and then drill the correct center hole. That's faster than trying to fill each of these holes without it leaking. Okay, these, all these little holes, this is where the tank baffle was. Those are all filled up. And then of course the big, the big hole here is filled. And now it's time to drill a new hole right here in the center so I can still have a drain.
Okay, this little ribbon here just strengthens this tube from flexing since it's hard welded on this end right here and it's also hard welded there on the bottom. Okay, back here at the rear of the tank, this is the uh, line that goes to the engine and then this will be the return line and it's going to have the same fitting in the stock location. But I determined I'm not going to do anything special on the inside of the tank. I considered using the stock system to recirculate the fuel back into the fuel tank. But I think it's okay, given that I'm using this baffle box, I don't see any way that any disturbance or bubbles are going to get into the baffle box. If I just return the fuel right down here low in the tank, it shouldn't create any sort of foaming or bubbles or anything. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, that's about as far as I'm going to go on cleaning out the inside of the tank. I got most of the light rust off and that should be enough. It doesn't need to be perfectly clean. As long as you store the tank with enough gas in it, it shouldn't really corrode again. I'm not going to be putting any treatment or sealer or anything on it. Bare steel is okay, but you have to, you know, drive the car and keep the fuel clean and, and full. Okay, I've done this before, but I'm basically trying to bake all the potentially explosive substances, especially in the seams. So this open flame is, is heating up. Anything that's in between or trapped in there is gonna be uh, boiled out and there will be zero risk of creating an explosion when I weld it back together. So this is just a preventative thing. I've done this before but I just want to do it one more time just to make sure that there's nothing trapped in those seams. And then I'm also, as another preventative measure, going to fill it with dry ice. Okay, it's been four or five hours. These have been getting a little darker, as they said. I'm pretty happy with them, so I don't want to wait anymore. I'm going to start tackling this box because this box needs to go in before I can put the tank back together. As you can see, I got a little carried away with the plating. Some of this are, are for future episodes, but while you've got all the supplies out, it's good just to get it all done. Yes, I've been hoarding these backing plates. Okay, guys, the plating is done on these parts, and this is, you know, slightly better corrosion protection. Um, originally, I wanted a little extra corrosion protection on these uh, check valves. But in reality, you know, plating inside the box doesn't really happen. It's, uh, it's shielded or shaded by the electroplating process. So this is as good as it's going to get. Plating is great for areas that are in contact with fluids. It's, uh, it's better than paint in some cases uh, for high temperature. It doesn't uh, get scratched or chip or anything like that. It's very, very thin. It doesn't build up on, on, on parts that are mated together. So plating does have its purposes. Those backing plates I showed uh, earlier and some of the steering rack parts, those are plated by the factory. So in those cases, uh, I just try to duplicate what they did. 
So right now it's time to weld the box onto the bottom of the tank so I can put this all back together. Let's do it. I'm almost ready to weld the bottom of the tank back on. The last thing I want to do is just tap the holes that I drilled for that top uh, cover plate or where the fuel filler neck goes. I don't want to get any shavings inside the tank, so I just thought I would do that first. I debated putting this baffle back in the tank, but it interfered with the baffle box I created and I could potentially put it on the other side, but then I decided just to leave it out. So here we go, fire and ice. All right, I'm moving around and welding in areas that fit nice. And then there's some areas like, like right here where the metal is overlapping. And that's understandable because there was big creases in the bottom of this pan. I've hammered them out and the process of hammering them out actually stretches the metal. So it's gonna overhang a little bit. So I'm gonna go back with my grinder and just you know make this uh, a butt weld again as much as possible. Okay, I'm about 30% around already, and I should probably add more dry ice. There is still a little bit here in this corner, because it's really chilly. Time for a status update. It's about 98% finished. Welding all the way around the perimeter. Looks good on both sides. I employed the fix-as-you-go technique, tightening up the gap and trimming and hammering as needed. And then I got to the front and there's really just two areas right here. This is where it was heavily creased by like a forklift or something. So I have a little bit left to do. This gap is huge. I think I'm gonna just go with some bigger filler rod and try to fill this up. This is about an uh, eighth of an inch, maybe, yeah, probably about eighth of an inch. I'm also running very low on gas. The, uh, the pressure needle there is pegged, but it still flows. So I'm trying to get this done. Okay, I busted out the uh, 16th inch rod and I'm just gonna try to go for it. Worst that can happen is I gotta get the MIG welder. A lot more heat input with the wider gap, but the bigger filler definitely helped. So place your bets now, will it leak? Vote right here. If I was confident, I'd be using diesel or gas or something, but this is water. Some water, when I was putting it in, some water did come down here. There's water. So right there is a leak. It looks like maybe a pinhole right there. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it looks like there's a start and stop point on the weld. And that's a pretty big fillet weld right there. Everything else looks dry. And here is where the water came out, right here.
that's it. Okay, and now we wait. This is take two. I don't think it's gonna leak now. Okay, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna test this thing. This is the, uh, the filler spout, and I did get the cap. So this is for a Harley Davidson, you guys. This, uh, this neck portion is from Harley Davidson, and this cap is from a Harley Davidson Sportster. So um, it's pretty nice. I mean, it's a CNC aluminum cap. It's like $12. I'm sure it's made in China, but it, uh, it looks good to me. And then I did weld, I finished welding all the way around. I came out one night and, and went all the way around. So this uh, should be okay. And then same thing on this side, I welded it around on this really thin bowl. So it's gonna need a little bit of, you know, call it body work when I paint the, uh, the bowl. So it looks good from the top because it's a little messy where I had to hammer and, and fix the welds on that. So, but I do want to make sure it doesn't leak. So I'm just going to put it here. Okay, and there's no leaks. It's been about two hours. I went for a long walk and paper is totally dry here. Nothing leaking from the fitting and nothing anywhere underneath the uh, fuel tank. So this is great. Okay, I tried to put some heat into the tank to try to uh, evaporate all the water that I put in there. Okay, now it's time just to make it look pretty. There's nothing fun about that job. This is messy. I skipped the second pass, which I used the strip it disc. The strip it disc is the same thing I used to strip the entire car. It's used on the Makita sander. It's like a, I think it starts as an eight inch disc. Mine's pretty worn down, but it does a great job of not only cleaning the surface, but prepping it for the epoxy primer. Puts just the right amount of scratches in. Hey, if you're still with me, thank you. Uh, give yourself a pat on the back. I know this fuel tank stuff is not the most exciting, but I'm gonna summarize again why I'm doing so much work to the fuel tank. Number one, you know, this is a resto mod and I want the latest technology with fuel pump design and location in my car. Uh, number two, I wanna avoid vapor lock. That is very typical today with ethanol fuels and classic cars. You know, I live in California, so it's high temperature and also high elevation. I mean, I live at the beach, but within two hours is uh, 7,000 feet elevation. So when you combine those two things or three things, if you use the ethanol, um, that is vapor lock is very, very possible. A lot of fuel system issues are overlooked, uh, probably due to the fuel pump itself. Um, and I have the availability now of using E85, which don't count that out in my car. And number three is serviceability. I can get to this fuel pump from the top of the fuel tank and probably replace it in less than 10 minutes. So I may carry a spare fuel pump in my glove box, boom, in and out. Uh, I could be back on the road again if this were ever to fail. The fuel pump I chose is a OEM quality that it's a proven fuel pump. It's a better technology than what was available back in the 70s. 
So that's, that's it, guys. That's the reason why I've done it. Of course, it's a lot of work. That's my method. Thanks again, guys, for watching. Uh, stay safe in today's world. I know it's, uh, it's crazy. If you're at home with a little extra time, number one, watch these videos. Number two, if you're stuck and you want to have a phone call or a Zoom call or something like that, please reach out to me. I am available for consultation. Cheers. Thank you.